Radiant damage, holy damage for smiting enemies and bringing down the power of the sun. Spells that deal radiant damage include Blinding Smite, Branding Smite, Crown of Stars, Crusader's Mantle, Dawn, Destructive Wave, Divine Favor, Flame Strike, Forbiddance, Guardian of Faith, Guiding Bolt, Holy Weapon, Moonbeam, Sacred Flame, Sickening Radiance, Spirit Guardian, Spirit Shroud, Sunbeam, Sunburst, Wall of Light, and Word of Radiance. Most radiant spells are Evocation, though uh, it can be Conjuration in rare cases. Radiant damage has a lot of light and sun related abilities, as well as some related to explosion, holy, and flame themed abilities. Many celestials are uh, immune or resistant to radiant damage, as well as dealing said radiant damage. Undead are sometimes vulnerable to radiant, as well as similar kind of the theme that's ongoing is that radiant is more effective against undead, like divine smite and sun blades. Sometimes uh, radiant is also effective against fiends too, like in the case of divine smite. Aesimars have radiant effects that deal radiant damage and have resistance to radiant damage as well. When it comes to class abilities related to uh, radiant paladins, of course, have radiant themes abilities with their smite, whether it be improved smite or divine smite. Um, especially when it's devotion, there's some more, a few more abilities in that subclass. The Zealot Barbarian also deals radiant damage. The Light Cleric has some light themed abilities which are tied to radiant. Stars Druid, uh, Sun Soul Monk, of course, uh, and the Radiant Celestial Warlock. Worth noting, Holy Water deals radiant damage to undead. Now, flavor talk here. The PHB uh, players. Handbook describes radiant damage as searing the flesh and overloading the spirit with power. I see it as more light than heat because really we already have fire damage for that. Um, and concentrated light of the sun or, or some other source, which is why it's so often associated with blinding effects. But also it it's, can be seen as holy spiritual power damaging the spirit. Um, this is kind of intangent to what each damage type encompasses like we have the physical damage um that being bludgeoning slashing and piercing we have the elemental damage uh types and then poisons kind of in there too um and then that leaves us with psychic for the damage affecting mind forces uh magical and then necrotic and radiant are the two spiritual types so that would explain why there's resistance to vulnerabilities by angels and undead, and undead are without spirit, and angels embody it, so, um, you know, it's not like using spirit to attack spirits, not again and do any good, well, something without, uh, you know, a soul uh, would be more damaged by it. Like, basically, radiant is spiritual uh, cleansing, and then that means that on the other side we'd have necrotic, which is spiritual corruption. It's kind of like how um, the light arrows from Zelda are more effective against Ganon. In this way, a mortal can't really truly comprehend what brain damage is, um, and it's almost has the power to unmake a creation. Um, like a Thanos snap, that's kind of one neat flavor for it, because you're literally t t damaging the spirit. But, okay, this brings us to a problem, because what about light that's more on the radiation side? And this is reinforced by futuristic weaponry, which is radiant. Now, here's the thing. I would say those are your two flavor options. Either make it divine light, which affects the spirit, or go the other end and make it... Or maybe <laughs> divine light is actually radi radiation, but... Or make it on the other end of the spectrum, which is actual radiation. In a more modern campaign, this would make a lot of sense. This is why something like the uh, Cyclops' um, eye beam would be radiant in a lot of cases, um, being more effective against undead, which are already in decay, and um, certainly has a more modern look at things in that regard.